Social and grassroots entrepreneurs are India's backbone and an important component of the Indian growth story. And in this regard, moving on to our next panel discussion, grassroots to green shoots, the changing phase of green entrepreneurship. This session will focus on supporting such entrepreneurs in the ecosystem. So we are looking forward to some inspiring and captivating journeys of our speakers. With that being said, the session would be moderated by none other than Mr. Benedict Paramanand, the heart and soul of the Green Literature Festival, a believer of the doctrine doing well by doing good, which is visible through his efforts for sustainability next. Founder of Bangalore Business Literature Festival, and the list just goes on. So with much love and respect, let me invite Mr. Benedict Paramanand onto the stage. Thank you so much for joining. Can we have a huge round of applause for him? I request him to take the proceedings further. Over to you, sir. So I'm truly privileged to have these two wonderful gentlemen with me. Uh, Professor Anil Gupta and Naga Prakasam. We fondly call him as Naga. Uh, they, you'll be surprised to know that I call them as road warriors because they just don't believe in uh, walking the talk. They just walk and walk. They walk to the villages, they walk to the hinterland and discover rare traditional knowledge, discover entrepreneurs and innovations, and bring it to all of our notice and realize that such things exist. So please, please give a big round of applause to Professor Anil Gupta for being here with us. It's no exaggeration to call him a uh, a social sector Gandhi. It's not an exaggeration. He's spent 30 years just going from corner to corner in the country and discovering rare potential that we can use, uh, we, we need to know and then apply in our lives. Uh, and of course, please welcome uh, Mr. Naga Prakasam. So he's the uh, author of this book, Back to Bharat, which was launched this year. And uh, congratulations, Naga. You've not only done an amazing job with the book, you've also done an amazing job with marketing. <laughs> so I get to see every week you've been launching the book somewhere or the other. So I think, I mean, go back to I mean, the reason for success of books today is that Authors become authorpreneurs. <laughs> yeah. So publishers have, after publish, they don't take, they don't care about you. And <clears throat> Professor Anil Gupta's book, Grassroots Innovation, 2018, and you'll be surprised to know, Naga was inspired by Professor Anil Gupta's book, and he picked this book at uh, Bangalore Business Literature Festival which we held at I am yeah at uh, I am Bangalore he picked it up and I'm sure it, that inspired him to write this book so in many many direct and indirect ways the literature festivals contribute to uh, in in different ways in spreading uh, rather influencing and um, inspiring potential authors Naga never thought he'll write a book I four or five years I back at him, he, he said, I'm not an author. But then he's put out a really fantastic book. So I'm going to start, okay, I'm going to start with this line which everybody says that India is an entrepreneurial nation. Every Indian is an entrepreneur. It's not a myth, like there are so many myths in India. This is not a myth, it is true. and. Professor Gupta and Naga have proved that entrepreneurship exists not only in the towns and cities, but to the really hinterland of India. And they have, through these books, shown that they just don't exist, they thrive, and 
we have we got a lot to learn from them so first interesting i mean please help us understand professor gupta the subtitle of your book minds on the margin are not marginal minds so uh, thank you benedict and thank you nagaraja to be here together with your wonderful book which i had the opportunity to see earlier uh, mind on the margin are not marginal mind it stems from the faith and fact of having found such creative people in almost every part of the country i have walked in every state of the country through show the yatras that we have uh, in summer we go to hot places warm places winter we go to cold places so that we don't have to justify why we were there people accept that if you come in a hardship a time of hardship you must mean something serious from andaman to goraj valley all every state we have walked through some more than once and there is not a one place that we have not found people who have surprised us with their creativity so in burger district of orissa i can take few examples yeah, yeah. so in burger district of orissa barpali where we had a show the yatra we come across karan meher and his wife who have woven a kurta without a single stitch can you imagine that a kurta without a stitch what kind of loom would be required to make cylindrical cloth just imagine for a minute that kind of creativity which combines culture of creativity with craftsmanship or craftsmanship with extraordinary ability to surprise anyone in the world who would claim to be an expert in weaving will be flabbergasted by this and we have come across examples of some of you might know in meghalaya tree root bridges bridges made of tree roots across on both sides of the river the river tree and uh, when i asked them why did you make such tree bridges you could have made of concrete bricks wood iron sir we wanted to do something sustainable something durable something which will not spoil the nature so what did you do so we came across these roots hanging on the tree look like ropes and then then we thought why don't we pull it together and that requires collective action so i have argued that the science is like alphabet technology is like word institutions are like grammar culture is like thesaurus so mind on the margin are not marginal because they generate completely unexpected solutions to the problem that we have learned to live with thank you that was a pretty inspiring example uh yeah very briefly i didn't uh, uh, truly go into nagas early uh, uh, bio so he had a very successful corporate life and just 10 years back he decided that he had enough of it and wanted to make a difference to the society and the kind of impact he has made in the last 10 years is mind boggling and i'd like to hear those numbers from him uh, <coughs> yes so naga share us uh, share with us for 2 minutes your transition from corporate to social and share us some numbers yeah so this um, again uh, it's amazing it's honored to be along with the professor and grassroots innovation is a fantastic inspiration uh, same publisher i've told radhika hey, radhika that's the benchmark He said your size is becoming bigger. She already cut 200 pages from this. It's really big. No, no. Look at Professor Book. You know that's a benchmark. We need to look at on that. So I think that's a that's a great inspiration. Also, I've learned about don't believing in PowerPoint. I think we need to learn from the professor, right? So it's going in, seeing in action. It's completely different than what PowerPoint has given. So that's a second inspiration on uh, doing this field visit so that we know the reality on the ground. That's important. So my career wise uh, i was in the us uh, 
I change, otherwise you are a typical middle class, you study, go abroad, settle, never look back. But 99 happened, uh, we, we went to this Diwali Mela. So the, you know, if you're a, a bachelor back then and Indian food, you'll go anywhere, right? So there's Indian food, Diwali Mela. So there was a stall called AID, Association for India's Development. This, this young lady said, put a pin on the place you're from. I put it on Madurai and she started talking about Aravind Eye Hospital how it was a great social business. I was shamed, ashamed because I had no idea about Aravind because I grew up in Madurai, that's my hometown, but I never knew about Aravind. So that day onwards, it kind of changed because that realized that how much I have no, no idea about what is happening in my own hometown. It's a Harvard case study, but a person living in Madurai has no clue what is happening, right? So that's what we are, you know, we are very, very blindsided and all. So since then, my Life completely changed. Every weekend is sent, spent on uh, these uh, events that we organize. And back then, we didn't have much money, so we go and volunteer in a uh, football game in the US and make money and support non nonprofits in India. So, you know, there's a lot of discussion with like Medha Parker and all those people who come there, Aruna Rai. So, that kind of created amazing opportunity about understanding what I call Bharat, right? There is nothing to do with Bharat, what is happening outside. I have nothing to do with that, right? So, so this is the, my, my Bharat is about the one billion people that we ignore. We always talk about this 250, 300 million who speaks English and all that stuff. So then, uh, you know, that exposure, if you've seen the movie Swadesh, so that is inspiration from Association for India's Development, the project that Shah Khan does in the movie that's actually we did from San Diego. So this is a inspiration about how our technology, what we've learned in engineering colleges, could apply in solving the problem that came through eight. Came back to India 2006, 2012 we sold the company. I said, no more running around. Let's go back to what I was enjoying back. So we gone deeper into the social business where I thought, how do we marry the heart of an NGO and efficiency of a corporate? So that's what I call social business. So we've done around 31 investments so far. Amazing companies have come out. You all know Sahas in Bangalore is creating a fantastic uh, impact. Carbon Masters and uh, Gokova, what I'm wearing. They work with the handloom weavers across the country. In Madurai, we started a nonprofit to promote rural entrepreneurship. I met Professor when in 2012 in his office. He told me there are a few places I should avoid, few organizations. I still follow that. I'll tell you the names later. But Abdul Razak, he introduced me in Madurai. That is what we started looking at. No English, no PowerPoint. How do we support? a person who's probably a diploma holder or 10th graduate, but he has a patent. He know how to file a patent. In IAM, IAM many of our startups, we need to have a coach coming and telling how to file a patent. Abdul Razak files himself. We are on 20 patents. He got award from President of India. So meeting, so going in his house, kind of amazing experience, Professor, about how a person with a humble, experience, humble background could innovate such a things. So that's when we started pushing towards Native Lead Foundation. So no English, no PowerPoint. We don't care what your degree is, where you're coming from. If you have great idea, innovation, we support. We support now around 15, 20 investment. These guys never went to school. And they're all running a three crore, four crore companies. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> so uh, one of the most amazing things which Professor Gupta has been doing is doing this uh, initiative called Shod Yatra. And uh, 50th is happening next month, this year? 50th, next month. Next month is the 50th Shod Yatra. Shod Yatra is a walk. He takes students to, uh, I mean, MBA students and uh, social activists to interiors of uh, uh, everywhere in India. And when he takes them, Students go with inspired. They are totally floored by what they see. So we have a small video to show about the Shod Yatra.
round, big round of applause, please. Yeah, I think we'll play Nagas also so that. Um Thank you. Uh, how many minutes we have? Five. Five? Yeah, good time to open up for audience questions. So, uh, Professor Gupta, you spoke about how the minds in the margin are not marginal. And that's, uh, that has stayed with me. And uh, the question I have uh, around this is a lot of these uh, you know, uh, innovations which come up from the hinterlands of our country uh, are often transforming, but the problem there is the missing link with the uh, scalable world. And uh, uh, many times what happens is the uh, bigger culprits in terms of damaging the environment or ecology connected with these hinterlands, uh, lack of infrastructure or lack of support that we provide to these hinterlands. So what is it, is there something that is being done already or if not, what can be done to connect this hinterland solutions uh, with the larger world? Because the problem really is in the scalable world where you know we, are, we don't have enough time to look at these kind of solutions. Because India historically has been a provider of these kind of solutions if you even look at a banana leaf. Yeah, where I think we he got it, got the yeah. question. Thank you. Thank you. There are two aspects. I will give a paradoxical answer. The first answer is that scale should not become enemy of sustainability. You go to a garden and there is only one flower, one kind of flower. You go to a forest and there is only one kind of tree species. How long will you stay there? So you need diversity. There are different niches which need to be filled with different kinds of solutions. That is one. Second, but at the same time we do need to scale so that people who are facing the same problem in another part of the country or world can also access the solution. Now, there are three challenges we have faced, briefly speaking. One is Micro Venture Innovation Fund, which we tried to set up in 2003 and 2020 again. We still haven't found a durable mechanism of funding, providing risk capital to these innovations at early stage. That is number one. Secondly, we also have found it difficult that these innovations, which are solutions for local conditions, may need to be brought into market by putting better design into them. So we need a lot of designers to work with these innovations. We have got great support from scientists for validating. We got great support from IP lawyers for filing patents. But design community is one that we are still looking forward to. So they have not yet come forward in the large numbers to be able to support each of these innovations. Thirdly, I would say that there is a need for all of you sitting here to realize that many problems that modern science and technology institutions and large corporations couldn't address are being addressed by these people. And some of these solutions can, in fact, be scaled not necessarily as artifactual, but as heuristics. That means you don't necessarily replicate the same design everywhere, but same principle underlying the design can be replicated. So I think there is a great scope for scaling up. We transfer technology to Kenya. We have transferred technology. I did recently 
I and my colleague and I have taught a course in 115 countries, 91 UNDP labs. We're trying to propagate this philosophy, scaling the model of Honeybee Network, and rather than scaling up always only the solutions, because every country should find their own solutions. Every society should find their own solution. It is not necessary that we should be providing solution to everybody. That, that tendency to dominate and control shouldn't be there, isn't it? So we should have multiple solutions, sources of solution. In which you said the definition of scaling is known in the modern world as, suppose you're making a dari, that same dari should be made for everybody and not innovate. But when it comes to business, and that question is to both of you, uh, innovation funding goes when they can see the entire spectrum right up to the profitability, growing, scaling. So is there something that we need to change fundamentally in the way businesses work, look, and in the social sector and innovation that's coming from the hinterland? Where, where is that uh, fine line? Yeah, and the question goes for both of you. So this is what, uh, there is a definition of social business that I'm putting together, right? The, the scale part, right? Today, there are people are bulldozing and scaling, growing very big. Then there is a watchdog. You have a CSR, you have a ESG. Yeah, right. They're watching them about what mistake they have done, how to fix it. So now there is an opportunity for this startups, a social business, what I call, they start looking at triple bottom line day one. Get into your DNA day one. So it, they may not scale that big, but they are sustainable, what Professor mentioned. Sustainable in the sense of financially, plus sustaining for the planet and people as well. So that's an element that we need to do. We got glamour today on the success is defined by the scale, how big you get. It need not be that in India we have Correct. 10, 20 million SMEs providing more jobs than all the corporates put together in Absolutely. India. So we don't realize that fact. So that is what Professor has done it. So some of the examples what we have done is about, can we make these innovators, they, they may not be an entrepreneur, they're an innovator. Right. So can we marry an entrepreneur with them so take the technology forward, right? So that is an idea that we could explore with the um, Abdul Razak example I mentioned in Madurai. Right. So we have connected them with uh, many of these entrepreneurs who takes work with them on innovation. So what, if you ask Abdul Razak, what do you really want? He said, I am not carried about patent or all that. I want to support students. So we got him a job in a college right. where he's, he's, he's supporting a guy 10th pass. He is now helping the engineering college students. So right. that was founded by Professor. So this is what we need to identify what they really want and then fill in the gap. But if you look at this hinterland solution, for example, like the Meghalaya, for example, uh, so in Manipur, one of our IMB alumni. So he's the first tribal from this, his community to come to IAM. So he wanted to leave the country and settle in, but after seeing the IMB incubator, he said, I want to go back to my help my you know, villagers. Now he's back in Manipur and he's trying to figure out what are all the producers are there? So we identified wild apple. There is only 30% is utilized. 70% not even picked up during the season. So he now, now took the wild apple and he connected with the Indian uh, Horticulture Research Institute, IH, IHR. They, the scientists who worked a lot, 40 years on a fruits, developed a candy. Now he's exporting that candy to UK. Mm. So this is what needed about taking the traditional wisdom. Then there is Elijah who is from the community now seen the outside, he's gone back, now he's able to communicate. So now he's calling me, said, I need a drone to come down and pick up the wild apple. Right. So the thought process changed in terms of, you know, I'm just looking at, you know, where, where can I sell this? This wild apple, they eat three times a day during the season, right? No, not even picked up later. So this is what, what we needed to marrying this business segment, you know, acumen to the knowledge that we have, then there is a business could be born. And people like Elijah is what I mentioned around 30 plus stories. Like this, one of his own students, like uh, Siddiq, right, from the Shudhiyotra, Sikkim. He saw that Sikkim is flooded with a lot of uh, turmeric. Right. But they're not getting the proper value, sorry, ginger. She analyzed why the Sikkim ginger is different. And she analyzed that Karnataka ginger, Sikkim ginger, this is why this Himalayan ginger is different. So then she was, the, she, she didn't take up a job after the IM, MBA degree, she went back to Sikkim, the Sikkim government set up a factory. So she saw that the processing, it need come to Silguri. Need not come to Silguri, move the economy to the village. So the factory is in the village, it get processed, the final produce come to the mother dairy in Delhi. Yeah. So this is what, what we need about coming. So there are more such examples in Naga's book, please buy. And uh, at least 
uh, there are 30, 30 stories, uh, and it is uh, really inspiring stories, and some of the young guys who are here who want to be social entrepreneurs, please read and get inspired. And to summarize, we are out of time. Uh, I think I picked up this line which you just mentioned that one of the uh, tangible outcomes of Professor Gupta Shodhyatra is that if, my, if he has taken 49, if he has taken say 5,000 students, at least 500 of them didn't go back, didn't go to US but set up entrepreneur uh, businesses in India itself. Yeah. So I'd like to conclude uh, with this very line that I picked up uh, from Professor, which is that uh, scale should not become an enemy of sustainability. So let's close with that line. And thank you so much, uh, Professor. Thank you so much, uh, Naga, for this wonderful conversation. Thank you. Not just exist, but thrive in India. And through this panel discussion on the changing phase of green entrepreneurship, we were able to gain insights into the challenges and changing trends in this field. So once again, thanking our speakers, I would request our moderator, Mr. Benedict, to felicitate our guests, Professor Anil Gupta and Mr. Nagaraj Prakashum. And yes, everyone, can we please have a huge round of applause for these gentlemen on stage. We do have a very special gift, handmade cards from the students of Parikrama School, and I invite them onto the stage to hand over the handmade cards to them, please. So as they walk up, these gifts are by uh, Second Life, uh, 